my god, holy shit! Oh my Oh dude, that is sick. Here we go again on my own. All right, so in case you haven't caught on already, I'm Australian, the other hosts are Aussies, and we love wine. We have six wines today that represent global superstars. We're talking top of the pops, and one of these wines is an Aussie. How much we would spend on each of these and how many would buy? Let's dive in. Wine number one, top of the pops, global superstars. This makes me nervous because now I kind of don't want to slam any of these wines, but I'm going to because I paid for them, which I think is fair. So I've got to try and pick the Aussie out of this lineup. Looking like white wine, crisp, clean, clear. Ooh, yummy. It smells already like really great Riesling oxidatively handled. Oh yeah. Oh dude, that is sick. That's very pleasing. A joy to drink, it's breakfast in a glass. I'm not too sure if this is the Aussie, it could be, but if it is Aussie, it's probably only gonna be one or two that can make wines in this type of style consistently. I would pay a lot for this, like I would happily drop, I'm gonna say 60 bucks, I'm gonna buy 12, this is just all class. This is exactly what I'm looking for. This is so up my alley, this is great. I think it's a German Riesling. I reckon that's gonna be like 70 bucks a bottle. I love it, I'm grabbing 12, 100%. Easy peasy, German Riesling, uh, 75 bucks for me. Wine number two, more golden than the previous wine. Got to be the gold kind of thing as well. Oh, it's like smelly oak. Maybe a little bit reductive. Wow, this is pretty whack. There is a little bit more ripeness than uh, I was expecting, which has kind of thrown me off kilter a little bit. <sighs> it's like burgundy. I think old world. I don't think Australia where it's more primary fruited and things are a little bit more bombastic. This is a little bit more subdued and then little brush strokes along the way. Wow, that's very easy drinking as well. That's so soft. Great wine, great finish. Jeez, it's still going. Oh, yum. That's so good. Perfect Chardonnay. Wow, uh, I would drop 100 bucks a bottle on this and I'd buy 12. I think that's uh, fantastic. I don't think it's Australian. I reckon that's a $60 bottle of wine. Have a dozen. We're off to a flying start. It's been a while since I've been so into the wines on the lineup. I'd pay about 110 bucks because I'm forced to. This doesn't feel like, you know, the tippy tops. And it's delicious, but I don't think it's $110 worth of wine. But blame oligarchs for just making this, you know, all happen. Bastards. Wine number three. Paler, but similar colour to the last one. Oaky, reductive. Deeper, darker. Got a lovely kind of savouriness to it. It's like melony is the flavour profile to it. If you like citrus and you like nuts, you'll like this wine. I can understand why these are global superstars, probably from Euro or something like that. I oh, know, I'd buy 12, but I only pay 60 bucks is what I'm trying to say. I reckon that's gonna be $40 bottle of wine. I would happily drink a dozen of that. I'd throw 80 bucks a bottle of this and I would buy 12 of these again, but this is a very, very good wine. <laughs> First red here, lighter colour, very slight brick hue on the edge. Soft plummy red as opposed to that deep dark red. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Yum. Spicy red fruits, it's nice kind of smokiness too. Potentially this could be coming from Australia. And it's got a little bit of spice to it, which is making me think this could be an Aussie Pinot, like a really high quality Australian Pinot Noir. Oz, question mark? Potentially, like only like the best New World regions can actually produce something that's this fantastic. I'm gonna grab 12 and I'll pay 75 pretty easily for that. Because it's amazing Pinot, I'm paying 120 bucks a bottle for it and I'm buying 12. <laughs> One number five, blackberries, then raspberries, very dark red. This is what I would expect from Pinot from France, as opposed to what we just saw before. Hi Brett. Brett, how you doing? I think it's a bit bretty. I'll be honest, like that could also be Aussie because the primary fruit on the palate is just full on. Very savory through the finish, a little bit of just sourness going on. I would launch 60 bucks a bottle of that and I would buy three bottles. I'm gonna buy three. I'd pay 40 bucks for that. I reckon that'll be a slightly cheaper wine compared to the others that we've had today. I'll call that in the $35. I'm really fearing where that Britannomyces is gonna go. At the moment, it's a really good drink and I would encourage you to buy it now. So this is like a hype producer. You should just buy it and enjoy it now. Don't sell it, just enjoy it now for what it is. Last wine, the darkest, deepest. Look at that. It's... Is that sediment? Oh, I think it's definitely come from the wine. It didn't taste good. There's been no expense spared on this wine, I don't think. It's pretty intense. Chewy wine. There's a lot of wine here. <laughs> That's dense. Oh my god. 
I didn't get it on first pull, but second mouthful I've had, that's just coated my mouth. Full bodied as you can possibly get. It's, it is an in your face wine, and because of that, I think it's American. It's just like, you know, classic American imperialism. It's just in your face. <laughs> I would expect to be paying close to 80 bucks a bottle for it, but they say this is gonna be 65 is what I would personally part with it, and I'll buy three bottles. I have another six of those. That'll be a $48 bottle. So I wanna buy six. I'll pay 95 bucks for it. But all of these wines are stunning. Absolutely stunning. Let's see what the rest of the guys think. Cool, all right, six. This is top of the pops. It's f***ing tops indeed. Did like, you struggle honestly, to pick the Aussie? There was two that I thought were the Aussie. Did I struggle to pick the Aussie? I picked an Aussie. So no, <laughs> in that start at the top, wine number one. Banger. 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 Shut up and play the hits, yeah, yeah, like yeah, honestly. 100%. Like we love good German Riesling. This is f***ing good okay. German Riesling. I called him Aussie. If this is Aussie, you're we're doing heat. Get out, no, 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 get no, out of no, town. No, 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 because I agree, it looks so German. Uh, it's got Botrytis energy to it. It's that oxidative handling of Riesling. Yeah. That's that vegetal thing, which I love. And it's so famous in Germany, and absolutely. Yeah. There is a high likelihood this is German. 60 bucks and 12 for me. 70 bucks and 12. 12 and 75, clean wow. sweet. Clean sweet, oh. that's, yeah. Oh, what a wine. Listen. Listen. There we go. Oh, you said. Love that bottle. Yeah, look at that. And a GG G -G action. Well, yeah. Which is, oh, fuck, that's oh. cool. Once you've had it a few times, you just go, yep, uh, it can only be that or someone trying their best to imitate the style. I think German Riesling might be my favorite sort of wine, to be honest. A Riesling is like one of the most versatile things. You could drink it for, you know, 20 bucks and be super happy or drink it for $200 and be super happy. Big On the Riesling. 11th day, God created Riesling. So wine number one was not the Aussie, was no. wine number two? Absolutely not. There's only one place in the world I reckon can make this shit. This is and unbelievable stuff. This is bug, baby. I ended up calling it Italian Suave because like I thought it had this like soft palate feel thing. That, oh, know. it's so good. It's so good. Simple 12 bagger for me and I wanted to pay hundred bucks. I was 110 for 12. I was 12 and 60. Global yeah. Superstars is living up to its name. How Bobby? much? Oh, 120. We're in that burgundy zone. Premier crew. Oh my God, holy shit. Oh my God. Dude, <laughs> dude. Not Chardonnay. Not Chardonnay. <laughs> What's even what? This is creme de la creme of the creme de la creme of the creme de la creme. Hot take. I've never thought that much of the Mount Mary wines in my encounters with them. I've always thought this is a bit overrated, but blind tasted. That's insane. And I'm now a true believer. That is a wine that you're paying for the stuff in the bottle. If you would put that in front of me and say, how much does this bottle of wine cost? $17. <laughs> Cheapest packaging. It's like if Nike changed the swoosh, you can't do that shit. All right. So that was the Aussie. That was the Aussie, which means all of these are top of the pops from not Australia. Oop. And where do we reckon this came in? That was my Aussie. Well, I thought this was like uh, Burgundy and this was Australian Chardonnay. I really loved it too. I, I wouldn't pay as much as I would for that. Um, no. But I don't know what the f is wrong with me because like when I was tasting this, I was like just screaming Chardonnay. When I first smelled it, I was like, oh yeah, okay, what's going on here? Then I tasted it, like amazing. I really liked it. I got a dozen of it. I got straight dozens through a lot of this to be honest. All right, so I was at 58 and wanted 12. I was at 60 and I also wanted 12. I was at 40 and I wanted 12. Yeah. These are all dozens so far. Yeah. Man. Jesus oh. Christ, man. Who's budgeting? 110? I'm jumping at Mount Mary. Yeah, but unfortunately it's American. So like you have to pay double to get it in the country. Chardonnay. So this is really exciting for me personally because I uh, interviewed Rajat Pa earlier uh, last week. Yeah, you took And this is one of his projects. many projects. Yeah, has been a part of his business for a while. Yeah, well, yeah. 40 bucks US. Probably. Probably. Maybe 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 fifty. Like when when you go to America and you see the prices of the wines in comparison with where they are in Australia, it's like it's like what the f it's cruel. I mean, that's not necessarily America's fault, it's the Australian economy's fault in comparison to strong US dollar. Like a lot of these wines never really leave American shores. It's, a, it's awesome to be able to see Sandy here because that's yeah. like it's it's a wine with a reputation, it's winery with a reputation, yeah. and Rajat Par is a bit of a bit of an elite dude. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome to see. I thought this was New Zealand. I thought this was Chile. I thought this was Australian. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it yeah. is peanut. Thank God, man. Oh my God. <laughs> to the degree straight away, I think I was at 120 bucks and wanted 12. Yeah, I was at uh, 75 and 12. It was, it's A grade, but it's not like triple A plus. Yeah, I was at uh, 80 bucks. Dude, Ew. what the? French? Oh, it's Berg. 70 Le Bon. That's amazing. Because usually yeah. we just see them a little bit darker, a little bit richer, a little bit more generous. All right, so the next two wines I struggled with. That's bread. Um, it's just bread of this. 
It's upsetting for me that one of the few things that I've been able to consistently identify in wines is Brett. So yeah, no, yeah, like... you're having a bad time with that if you're, if you're always identifying Brett. Mm. I was 60 bucks and three, please. I was $35 for six. I was uh, 40 bucks and three. Yeah. Got it. Nero Davolo from Sicily. Yeah, so, yeah the actual I could, wine I could, as well. Yeah. He nailed that. Dude, that's fun. Clearly I've had a few bad experiences yeah, with this wine. <laughs> <laughs> Last wine. This is um, this is a lot. There's a lot of tannin in this wine. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot going on here. That, I thought this was American. It is almost imperialistic with the amount of intense flavour in this. <laughs> that sediment sitting in the glass? I think oh, it's probably. cork. I think Americans are a really good shout here. Yeah. This is a chewy, chewy, chewy wine. Mm, chewy. If you love big wine, this wine is for you. Got I wanted to spend 65 bucks. I thought it was admirable as a style. And I only wanted three though, just because it's not it's not my personal sort of vibe. Yeah, I stuck with six. I don't know if I was just riding high off these. And like usually if this was in a different lineup, it might have been like a three banger because that's where my head was at. But I still wanted six of them. Uh, I wanted to spend 48 bucks. Yeah, I was happy to pay 95 bucks because you can see the quality and the intensity there. And I'd gra grab half a dozen because I reckon over like 15 years you could drink this pretty instant. All right, how much was it? Oh, on the money. Price is right, baby. Let's go. Indy. Doro. I don't know this wine at all. I guess that's what Portuguese does. It's not about what's in it, it's about the style. And this is the style that they like. This is tough. This is tough. That's insane. Uh, I'm I'm there. I mean, I, I'm, I'm yeah. on the first two. If you said which one of these wines can I have endless supplies of and drink forever, it'll be this one. Yeah, the context of that makes everything. Yeah. Like, that's what it is. But if you show that to anyone you like that has no context of what it is, yes. so you go, oh my God. Yeah. Who would have thought we'd pick the Australian one? <laughs> You know, by population, we're actually the most successful <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. <laughs>